Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya Wal Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Please recite with me As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله أني رسبت بيوز أف مدني شن Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam has been reported to have said Allah Almighty has appointed an angel to my grave which has been given the ability to hear the voices of all the creation thus whoever sends salat upon me durud until the day of judgment the angel presents to me his name and the name of his father saying son of so and so has sent salat upon you subhanallah sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim beautiful narration beautiful hadith respective viewers of madhani shal ulama they mention a point after mentioning this hadith they write that look at the hearing power of the angel who is serving at the court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Look at the knowledge he has been granted by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that not only he can hear the voices of all the creation, no matter from where they are reciting salat upon Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But that angel who is there present at the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He does not only listen and hears the voices of an individual reciting salat from anywhere in the world. But subhanallah also he knows his name. And not only that, he also knows the name of his father. And he presents his salat upon Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, whatever he has recited, durood he has recited in the blessed court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Now ulama they mention this is the hearing power, listening power of someone who is present, who is serving at the blessed grave of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. A servant, a khadim, this is the power of hearing of that khadim. Now imagine what would be the hearing power of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama for whose sake this whole world, all the creation, all the alameen have been created for the sake of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama. Now imagine how much hearing power, how many powers Allah tabarak wa ta'ala would have granted to his own beloved Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. So this is something we should understand as believers, subhanallah, how many blessings and how many powers and how many miracles would Allah tabarak wa ta'ala have provided to his own beloved when this power is granted only to that angel who is serving at the blessed court the blessed grave of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Respect me, Muzaf Madani Shal. Today, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal, we will be learning about Ashike Akbar, the greatest devotee of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam, who is known to be Siddiq Akbar, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an insha'Allah azza wa jal. Respect Yusuf Madhani Shal. 
Allah Taala has mentioned in the Holy Quran, "Say you, O oh beloved, my salah and my sacrifices and my living and my passing away, all are undoubtedly for Allah, who is Lord of all the worlds." Now, in Tafsir, Surah Al Jinan, Mufti Sahab, he writes in the Shura, in the commentary and explanation of this ayah of Quran, he writes, everything that has been mentioned in this very verse is in reality the template of life of a believer. That's how one's life should be, a believer's life should be. Subhanallah, that standard is mentioned in this ayah Mubarakah. For a Muslim's life, death, worship, should all be for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. He should live his life performing actions that please Allah Almighty. And his purpose in life should be to elevate the religion of Allah Almighty. Likewise, he should die in the state of Iman and if possible for the elevation of the truth. Haq. Similarly, being free of open polytheism in worship is from the matters of Iman, but his worship should be free of hidden shirk, i.e. ostentation, show off also, and it should only be performed for the pleasure of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Subhanallah. Mira har amal bas tere vaaste ho, ho ikhlas aisa ata ya ilahi. This couplet is written by my Shaykh Tariqat. He is praying in the court of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala for sincerity, for ikhlas. And he, this couplet is, you can say, a depiction of this beautiful ayah mubarika that whatever we do, we should do for the sake of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Our sada, our qurbani, our sacrifices, our worship, whatever we do that should be only for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, that should not be for the people, that should not be for creation, that should not be to show off, that should not have an element of ostentation in it. Rather, whatever we do, we should do for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Lillahi rabbil alameen. Our every act should be only for the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. We should pray in the court of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that we get such sincerity, that we get such ikhlas. Whatever we do, we do for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Respect to viewers of Madhuri Shil, when we see the life of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an, we see that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an's life is full of sincerity, ikhlas, and whatever he did his every action that was for the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And inshallah, I would like to mention a brief introduction of Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala. And his respected name is uh, Amir al-Muminin Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. His name is Abdullah. His kunya is Abu Bakr and his titles are Siddiq and Atiq. Subhanallah. The meaning of Siddiq is one who speaks the truth abundantly. Subhanallah. He was referred to by this title even in the period of ignorance because he always spoke the truth. The meaning of Atiq is freed. The beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama conveyed glad tiding to him. Good news was given by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama saying, Anta atiqum minan nar. Subhanallah. Meaning, you are free from hellfire. So this glad tiding was given by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama who is the nur of ghayb by the bestowal of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has given him this knowledge, subhanallah, which is why this became his title as Atiq. He is Qurayshi, radiallahu ta'ala. And 
seventh generation above, his lineage joins with that of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He radiallahu an was born in Makkatul Mukarrama, approximately two and a half years after Amul Fil, the year of the elephant, that account which is mentioned in Surah Fil. So and that's how we can calculate his uh, the birth. Amongst all the free men, he radiallahu an is that Sahabi, that companion, who was the first to testify to the prophethood of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam respected viewers of Madani Shal, he radiallahu an possesses such great noble virtues and excellences that after the Prophet salam, he radiallahu an is the greatest and most superior to all the mankind. That is the reason in khutbah, in Jum'atul Mubarak, when we go, we hear this, Afmadul Bashar, Ba'd al-Anbiya, subhanallah. Respected viewers, amongst all free men, he radiallahu an was the first to embrace Islam. He was the one who embraced Islam the very first. He radiallahu an remained an advisor and wazir to the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama in every decision of war and in peace. He radiallahu an remained loyal to Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam by supporting him in every matter of life. After two years and seven months of being the caliph, he radiallahu an passed away on 22nd Jumad al-Ukhra in the 13th year after Hijrah on the best day of Monday. Amir al-Mu'mineen Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an led his funeral prayer and he radiallahu an was laid to rest inside the illuminated shrine beside the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Throughout life he remained subhanallah in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. When Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam announced his prophethood, he was there. Subhanallah. And respected viewers of Madani Shani, further, we also learn that even today, he is resting next to the mazar of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Respected viewers of Madani Shani, there are so many blessings and there are so many excellences, subhanAllah, which can be mentioned when we talk about the that of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala. There is a beautiful hadith of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, subhanAllah. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has been reported to have said, every person that I invited to Islam always requested some time, took some time, and thought about it. But Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an is that individual whom I invited to Islam and he recited the kalima immediately without any doubt or thinking or pondering. And answered in the fold of Islam, subhanallah. Respective views of Madani Shal, there are so many subhanallah distinctions. They are associated with this personality, and subhanallah, this is one of them. That Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar ta'ala an did not give a second thought when he heard that Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has declared his prophethood. And he accepted Islam straight away without pondering, without thinking, without giving a second thought. And this is also Shan of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala and subhanallah and respective viewers of Madani Shani when we talk about the sacrifices Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala and made for Islam for the elevation of Islam for the propagation of Islam subhanallah to support the Islam subhanallah you see, the, the intellect, it gets amazed when we hear about, subhanAllah, the sacrifices he made for Deen Islam. 
he radiallahu ta'ala and was a trader businessman and was the owner of vast business in clothing the day he radiallahu an accepted islam he radiallahu an had 40000 dirhams or dinars i.e. 40000 silver or gold coins after accepting islam he radiallahu an spent them all in the way of allah tabarak wa ta'ala allahu akbar allahu akbar. 40,000 silver or gold coins he possessed and he spent all in the path of Allah wa ta'ala after accepting Islam. This was the generosity of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala and subhanallah and respective viewers of Madhi Shalil. In one narration, it is mentioned that he radiallahu ta'ala and is that personality who from the time of accepting Islam until the migration of Medina continued to sacrifice his wealth for the sake of Islam. At the time of migration, he radiallahu an had five or six thousand dirhams which he radiallahu an took with himself and sacrificed at the feet of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Respecting views of Madhuri Shal, this is the that of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an. Allahu Akbar. When it came the time when Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam made an appeal for deen Islam and appeal was made for the funds. Sahaba Ikram, they brought their possessions. Sahaba Ikram, they brought money, whatever they could present in the court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam they presented, they came. That was the day when Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu an thought that this is the day in competing good deeds I will win from Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala. That was what he was thinking. Yes, my dear respective viewers of Madhuri Shail, our Sahaba Ikram, they had a mindset to compete in good deeds. Their mindset was to go ahead in terms of earning rewards from the court of Allah wa ta'ala. They used to think that how can I become more pious in the court of Allah Taala? How can I earn more reward from the court of Allah Taala? This was the mindset of companions of Prophet Sallallahu Taala Alaihi Wasallam. Ridwanullah Taala Alaihim Ajma'in. Respected viewers of Madani Shalil, this is what was taught by Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu an that today I will present my mal, my wealth in the court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and today is the day that I will win from Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an in terms of earning good deeds and rewards from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So he brings half of the wealth what he possessed and he brought in the court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam respective views of Madhuri Shailil, now he had brought, presented in the court of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was the weight of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an. When Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an comes, subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, he presented his wealth, his possessions in the court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam asked, O oh Abu Bakr, what have you left behind? What have you left at your home? <coughs> Allahu Akbar. What was the answer of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala? An? Siddiq ke liye hai khuda ka rasul bas. Allahu Akbar. Respective viewers of Madhuri Shail, the answer of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an was that I have left the name of Allah and his messenger at my home. And whatever he possessed, whatever possessions he had, even ulama, they have written that he was putting his hand on the walls that even if any needle is left behind to give in the part of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, it should not be left behind. It should even take that needle and present in the court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama for deen Islam, for religion of Islam. 
This was the jazbah. This was the passion to serve the religion of Islam. Subhanallah, Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala unpossessed. And subhanallah, that was the time when Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala un had realized that I cannot step ahead in terms of earning good deeds from Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala un. Respected viewers of Madani channel, it, it is very easy to talk about. It is very easy to phrase and say sentences like this. It is very easy to say and do speech or listen speech. But imagine whatever you have got at your home, whatever possessions you have got at home, and you asked for the deen Islam, and you bring each and everything in the court of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama. When it comes to act upon, it's not easy. Allahu Akbar. This is the that of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala. And that is the reason he is known to be, subhanallah, afdalul bashar, ba'dal anbiya. One of the reasons that he sacrificed each and everything for the sake of deen Islam, subhanallah. Respected viewers of Madani Shal, in the narrations, it is mentioned that he radiallahu an is that personality whose wealth the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam spent like his own wealth. Allahu Akbar. This was the i'timad, confidence, subhanallah, and love between Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar that whenever it came to spend from the wealth of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam spent like his own wealth. This sharaf is also for Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an. He radiallahu an served the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so much with his wealth that beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam himself said, nobody's wealth has benefited me like the wealth of Abu Bakr radiallahu an. Allahu Akbar. Who is saying, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is saying this. Allahu Akbar, respective viewers of Madani Channel, and this is the personality for whom Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama has said that I have repaid the favors of all in this world, whoever has done favors, I have repaid their favors, but the favors of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar will be repaid by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Respected viewers of Madani Channel, Allahu Akbar. This is the shan, this is the exalted status of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an. That all other sahaba karam or all other people's favors, their uh, return was given to them. Allahu Akbar. But subhanallah, the reward of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an's favors will be by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala give us ability and tawfiq that we understand the true status of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu anhu. But respect views of Madani Shaykh. Let's pause a bit. Let us ponder, let us think, what is our condition? What is our mindset? This was the mindset of Sahaba Ikram Ridwan Allahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'een. They used to compete in earning good deeds. They used to think for their hereafter. They were ready to sacrifice each and everything they possessed in the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. What is our mindset? Those were the people they migrated, they left everything behind when it was ordered to migrate for the Islam. Their possessions, their wealth, their money, uh, business, house, family even, Allahu Akbar. They did not give a second thought, when order was there, they migrated, they left. That very homeland where they used to live, they were born. These were Sahaba Kiram. And whenever it was appealed for funds, subhanallah, their possessions they presented in the court of Allah. We are also believers, we are also mu'min, alhamdulillah, mu'mineen, believers. So what is our mindset? Are we ready to sacrifice for deen Islam? How much do we give to our religion, to our, to, to our deen. How much do we accumulate for the hereafter? What is our mindset? Allahu Akbar. Unfortunately, some of them, they've got a mindset when it comes to give in the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. They put their hand in their pocket and they search for the coins. The smallest one, whatever possible, they give. 
Even some that don't even give on Fridays in the path of Allah Taala, when the reward is 70 times ahead. It is easy to spend when it is to spend for friends to go out, to eat. But it is very hard for us to spend in the path of Allah Taala. Why is that case? Why we do not compete for earning good deeds? Whereas Sahaba Ikram, they used to compete with each other to earn more and more reward. Where do we compete? Yes, we also compete. But we compete if my brother has got one car, I should have better than him. We compete my brother or my, my fellow Muslim brother, he has got one house, I should have two. He has got uh, in a low area, I should have in a better area. I should have Bangalore, a mansion. This is our competition. We compete in terms of this dunya, where as Sahaba Ikram Ridwanullahi Ta'ala alayhim ajma'in, they used to compete for the hereafter. They used to they used to earn rewards, they used to accumulate rewards for the hereafter. This was their mindset. Do we learn something from their seerah? This is one of the reasons whenever days of these blessed personalities come, we talk about them. We listen to their seerah, we talk about their life and we learn from their legacy. What footprints we can follow, subhanAllah, respective viewers of Brother Nishan, they have set a very high standard for us. But at least we should learn something, at least we should take some lesson from their seerah, from their life and legacy, and we can also act upon. When it comes in the, to give in the path of Allah, Taala, we should be generous, yes, my dear respective viewers of Madani Channel, because Sayyidina Abu Dhar Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala said, our wealth has got three shareholders. One is our taqdeer, our fate. And our fate does not wait to take its share, our mal, whenever it comes to take away. It doesn't wait. And respected viewers of Madani Channel, the other one is the second shareholder is his. Our successes, they also take their share. And the third one is, he said, it is yourself. So you should accumulate your wealth for the day of hereafter, for the day of judgment. Accumulate wealth. Spend in the part of Allah wa ta'ala and accumulate and, and give the best possible thing you have got in the part of Allah wa ta'ala. So that when you will be in need of that share, respective views of Brother Nishan, that's what it means. That you'll be able to get that. Yes. Whatever we eat, whatever we spend on ourselves, that is ours. The rest is not ours. That mal is not ours. Our heirs, our successes will use that. And we never know how are they going to use that. Today, if you've got something, we should give in the part of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. As much as possible, we should give in the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. We should accumulate something for the hereafter. And that is what we learn from the seerah of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala. And respective viewers of Madhani Shail, we are hearing about Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala and fada'il, excellences. Subhanallah. Let me mention, who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala and Yes, respective views of Madani Shalil, Allah wa Ta'ala has given excellence to some over some. Always something stands out. If you just look, there are many angels. But subhanAllah, there are four angels who stand out. And amongst those four, Sayyidina Jibreel, Jibreel Amin, alayhi salam. He stands out the most. There are many books. Sahifi also, yeah, if you talk about in terms of that. And amongst the major books, Quran stands out. Respect views of Madani Shail, there are 12 months, but Ramadan al Kareem stands out. There are seven days, but Jum'atul Mubarak stands out. Respect views of Madani Shail, there are many stones, but diamond stands out. There are many flowers, but rose stands out. There are many prophets, but Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the leader of all the prophets. And there are many sahaba kiram and Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an. 
has the most greatest status amongst all. And it is said that after all the prophets, alayhim salam, the greatest, most elite personality is the personality of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an, and his Dhati Aqdus stands out. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an? The first to be known as Sahabi amongst the male. Who is Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an? The first to have the honor of being Mu'min. Who is Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an? The first to deliver sermon in the Kaaba. Khutbah in the Kaaba. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar? The one who always avoided alcohol before and after the acceptance of Islam. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar? The one who sacrificed 40,000 dinars, his own personal wealth, at the feet of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an? The one who freed Mu'addin Rasul, Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu an. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar? The one who sacrificed everything in his home in the way of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala as we heard. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar? The one who had the honor of carrying the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama on his shoulders. Allahu Akbar. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar? The one who spent three days and three nights with beloved Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama in the cave. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar? The one who tore his clothes to plug the holes in the cave. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an? In whose lap the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama put his blessed head and slept. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar? The one who did not disturb the sleep of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama despite being bitten by the snake. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar who, on whose heel the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama applied his blessed saliva. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar? The one who served the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama during the migration. Who is Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar, the one who was given the title of Thani of Nain in the Quran, respective viewers of Mani Channel, who is Siddiq Akbar? Siddiq Akbar's Sahabiyat is proven from Quran, Allahu Akbar. He is referred as a companion in Quran. Who is Siddiq Akbar? The one who remained with Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in every difficulty and hardship. Who is Siddiq Akbar? The one who stayed with beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam everywhere. Whether it be in travel or non-travel, in the cave or in the shrine, subhanallah, next to the shrine of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Who is Siddiq Akbar? The one whose favors and services were mentioned by beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. The one who had the honor of inamat many times during the apparent lifetime of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. This is the sharf of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an. That when it came to lead salah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose amongst all Sahaba Ikram, Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an, and made him stand at the musalla of Imamat Allahu Akbar, and he made him Imam in his own life, and he led many prayers at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar, this is the shan of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an. Who is Siddiq Akbar? The one who put an end to the dinars of Zakah. Who is Siddiq Akbar? The one who gave the command to gather the Quran in one place. Who is Siddiq Akbar? Siddiq Akbar is that personality. Paradise has eight doors. And Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an will be called from each door. Allah Akbar. That is the Zat of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an. Respected viewers of Madani Channel, subhanallah. We can talk and talk about this blessed personality, subhanallah. Time does not permit us to further carry on. But subhanallah, respected viewers of Madani Channel, there is so much to talk about. There is so much to say, subhanallah, about this Zat, about his ishq, about his love, about his devotion. 
towards Allah and His Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He was farafir rasul. He was lost in the love of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Today we learned a little bit about the seer of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an. And now uh, at the ends of this bayan, I would like to just give you a message that we should learn some lesson from the seerah of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu anhu. We should be ready to sacrifice for the Islam. We should be ready to compete in terms of good deeds. We should accumulate the wealth of the hereafter in terms of good deeds. We should also prepare for the hereafter, subhanallah. And we should have at most love of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. This is the message we learn from the seerah of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an that we should have our love and devotion more than anything in this world, more than our wealth, more than our parents, more than our own life, each and everything in the world. We should love Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam at the most. And this is the message from the seerah of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala an who is Yari Ghar and Yari Mazar. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Oh, barik to you, it's my prayer. Oh, barik to you, it's my prayer. May you keep ascending success, say success.